Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, UITP, for allowing me. for allowing me to, to present uh, this case study about Medellin Metro Cable uh, in Colombia. I'll try to be short, it's already six, uh, and it's Friday. Um, the idea is for me to let you know more, um, a little bit about ropeway uh, technology. How does it work? Um, it's already existing in India. Boma has uh, conducted some projects, mainly for touristic uh, area in uh, Kashmir, in uh, Sikkim, in, uh, in several states, uh, quite recently in Tamil Nadu, in Palani Temple, uh, we are developing a new project. Um, I will go briefly into an uh, introduction about the technology itself, what uh, it's allowing, um, and then I will go uh, briefly into this Medellin case study about the master planning policy of the city, including this uh, technology, a specific central oriental corridor, where they use intermodal connection between a tram, cable cars, and a pedestrian area. And then um, some feedback and track record uh, on this last 15 years evolution about the transportation network in this South American city uh, um, from 2004 to uh, today. I go quickly on the urban development, uh, especially in India, you're well aware about the need for public infrastructure, uh, growing cities, growing urban population, need for uh, environmental reason, social development about uh, public transportation. A quick focus on Poma. It's a French company existing since 1936 when uh, Jean Pomagelski, from Polish, French engineer from Polish origin, invented the first ski lift uh, uh, for ski resorts in the French Alps. Towards uh, nowadays, um, all those pictures, all those transportation system Automated people system, uh, f uh, uh, cable cars, uh, cable trams are all passive vehicle, meaning they don't have any engine on board, they don't have any braking system, there's no signaling system. It's cheap, easy, cost effective, simple, and it's just attached with a grip, rather in the air or on the ground, attached with a grip to a cable, and the cable itself is moving with the vehicle attached to the cable. Um, for top supported, uh, just to give you a range, for top supported system, depending on the technology we are using, we're talking about a few thousand PPHPD capacity, a bit more for uh, APMs we are branding as mini metro, especially for airports, uh, APM application to connect terminals one to each other. Key element to have in mind, uh, that kind of ropeway system doesn't meant to replace metro or mass transit. We are talking about low or medium capacity. We are talking about connecting lines, feeding uh, uh, main backbones, extending a network on last mile connectivity. Mr. Secretary was uh, talking this morning in his address. We're leaving uh, a congested uh, corridor or filling gaps in a network. This picture is just to show you briefly that in people's minds, cable cars and aerial ropeway system are meant for Ely region, mountains. It's often the case, but not always. You can see the picture of a city of uh, Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic capitals in the Caribbean, where we are uh, finishing the construction of a five kilometer line with four stations connected to the city metro there's only four meter elevation difference between the two ends of the station. It's a Caribbean island, obviously. It's completely flat. They have chosen this technology, just as a, a Medellin example we're gonna uh, have a look uh, into after. Um, first of all, because it's allowing to fly over obstacles. You have here a picture of the city of Nizhny Novgorod. Sorry, uh, Dimitri, for my uh, pronunciation. Um, a city in Russia where we have a 900 meter span between two towers to fly over the Volga River and connect two cities of the same urban area. In cities, uh, um, we are flying over natural obstacles, uh, climbing slopes, but as well urban obstacles, 
elevated guideway, uh, buildings or whatever, saving huge civil work, huge construction costs by just having two towers, a cable and flying over it. Exclusive route, content speed, we're talking about only 20, 25 kilometers per hour, but we never stop. There's no impacts by the traffic, uh, uh, floating, uh, anything what's happening on the ground. Cost and project time, schedule. Uh, we are talking about uh, pre-manufactured component that we are assembling on site with small construction civil work to be done. So it's going to be completed in some cities from 12, 18, 24 months maximum, depending on the complexity of the urban integration uh, within the, uh, uh, the city itself. The space requirement, the footprint. In many cities, land acquisition cost is a huge issue for public transport. We are talking about four square meter for a tower on the ground every two to 300 meter. Let's say um, one kilometer line with two stations at both ends will need three, maybe four towers, 16 square meter, maybe a third of this stage, more or less. You have very, very few urban transport system allowing you with so small footprints on the ground to carry several thousand people an hour. It's a nice picture of a New York City where you have an aerial tramway, so two uh, big cabins of 120 people capacity that is connecting Roosevelt Island on the left side to Manhattan. So people are using it. It's besides Queensboro Bridge. Rather than taking their car, they're just boarding this aerial tramway. In two minutes' time, they reach Manhattan and they can connect with the, the subway, the city subway. Same kind of a sea straight crossing, the city of Yeosu in South Korea. It's a monocable uh, system. Smaller uh, cabins, 8, 10, 12 people, capacity with a frequent headway, 10, 15 seconds uh, uh, in, the, in the station. We're going to focus on Medellin. Um, this is a multimodal station where the cable car is landing just above the metro station in order for people to have an easy and fast, smooth connection from one transportation mean to another. This is the city of Ankara in Turkey, where there is also a cable car system connected to the metro. You can he see the, the station design where the, the cars, the station is built ob uh, above the streets, and the cars are just uh, keep uh, uh, going under the, the station itself. Some different ropeways, IRL ropeway system uh, uh, we have done um, in various countries, mainly in Europe, Latin America, and few in cities, uh, Asian cities like Hong Kong, Yeosu, or, or Taipei. Now quickly, the, the Medellin case study. Um, so it's the second largest city in Colombia, um, two, almost 2.5 million inhabitants, known in the 90s for uh, not a very good reputation, violence, drug traffic, uh, uh, Pablo Escobar uh, cartel, some uh, Hollywood movies, let's say. And uh, in the early uh, 2000, a huge policy, uh, public policy, in order to do some major redevelopment, urban redevelopment in the city. Uh, very targeted social urbanism with massive investment in very targeted and privileged area, mainly in transport, education, and sports. And the idea of the mayor at that time was to get the best for the poorest, and especially to reduce the social inclusion of the population. You have here um, a view of the master plan, the city of Medellin. North is on the right, south on the left. And uh, they decided to optimize corridors in order to solve the current demand, anticipate the future development of the city and the future need for infrastructure, and optimize the, the social exclusion risk within the city how to make sure that people will get rid of their car because they could be from point A, their home, to point B, their work, school, hospital, or whatever, using public transportation from end to end. You have a, a, a Google map view of the, of the city, a north, south, uh, center, east metro corridor that has been built uh, late 80s, early 90s, and then 
feeding line you see on the on the right the first metro cable uh, line two kilometers three thousand capacity and then the first line was a success they decided to build some new lines in order to feed their main backbones the j-line in 2008 another one in 2010 then a tramway uh, uh, we'll see uh, later uh, supplied by alstom uh, in 2016 um, m line to feed the tramway line and uh, we've just been awarded the p line uh, will be commissioning on the right side uh, uh, by 2020. one main reason of the success is we have here 10 lines today one single network using four different modes two metro four cable car soon within two years uh, a six one two brts and one trams sorry it's in spanish but i guess you you can understand the main uh, um, legends uh, line length the capacity uh, the headway of the vehicles the travel time um, you can see that we are talking about light capacity even for the metro 35,000 an hour it's not much compared to some uh, huge cities and few feeders integrated uh, uh, feeding this uh, this main uh, tram metro backbone the central uh, small focus on the central oriental corridor so um, in order to allow a 300,000 uh, uh, parts uh, inhabitants parts of the city uh, uh, in the center west of the of the city um, they decided to invest in a tramway line there's the green line you see on the on the picture with two uh, purple and pink line two cable cars in order to connect this tram feed this tram that goes up to the center to a major hub san antonio uh, where the two uh, metro lines are crossing um, another key element is part of this huge redevelopment it's not only transportation it's all the urban uh, surrounding area how they will do some cycling path, uh, um, uh, pedestrian access to the station, and how they will redesign the city uh, around the, the, the transport uh, infrastructure itself, let's say. About the, the financing uh, um, operation of this tram cable car uh, operation, it has been financed by uh, AFD, so the, the French counterpart of uh, KFW, um, with a loan, uh, a 250 million US loan, to the city of Medellin, uh, which is buying and owning the assets and giving the uh, implementation, operation and maintenance of the whole network to a public uh, entity, Metro de Medellin, uh, which is the public operator of the, of the city. Um, you can see here the network as it was 10 years ago on the right. So blue and red Metro and the first green cable car feeder uh, talking about 100, um, 123 million passengers a year. And the network today, um, they invested in a tram, few cable cars, BRTs, no big infrastructure, uh, no big investment, and they more than doubled the ridership uh, uh, on a yearly basis. Different reason for this success. Um, as we mentioned, they used various modes of transport. There's no one good solution. The idea is to use several adapted to the need in order to interconnect them. Another key uh, uh, success factor is, of course, the fact that more than a single operator, it's an integrated network interconnected with at least, if it's not a single operator, a public authorities that make sure that the various operators are operating an integrated network with the schedules, uh, uh, with, of course, a tarification system, allowing the people to, uh, uh, with a single ticket, do their whole trip using one, two, three different transportation mode. And at last, of course, the physical in integration. We've seen this picture already. Um, if for multimodality, um, people need to onboard walk 500 meters in order to get uh, their next transportation system, it won't be competitive compared to their car on an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, transport. So we're talking about walking less than 80 meters, one minute connection between one transportation to another. So it's key for architect, urban planner to design a proper integrated multimodal station. 
some uh, uh, few figures. Um, the technical success, first of all, um, cable cars seen as an attraction, tourism. Uh, uh, here we're talking about 20 hours of operation per day. Uh, um, huge problematics of preventive maintenance, uh, operation, and of course availability rates, what matters in public transport. People are relying in the morning uh, on the system to go to work, so we can't afford to have any failure, any problem. Um, the social inclusion, um, more than 10 years after the, the K-Line, the first cable car uh, uh, operation, they've seen the, the homicide rate drop by 84% uh, um, uh, nearby the, the, the first metro cable uh, uh, line. The economical impact, of course, as any public transportation infrastructure, if people are saving time, it's a lot of money at stake, especially if we are talking about millions, uh, uh, hundreds of millions of uh, uh, trips per, per year. The environmental impact, um, the city is getting uh, uh, from the UN CDM program, uh, uh, proving that the, the, their new systems is allowing some uh, CO2 emission saving. They are financing parts of the operating cost uh, through this, uh, this program, almost 2 million US uh, over five years, six years. Um, you can see a picture on the, on the right, uh, PM Lee, so the Singaporean Prime Minister, awarding the um, 2016 um, World City Prize to the uh, Medellin Mayor and, um, and uh, Medellin Governor uh, in 2016 last, uh, last year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fauché, for your presentation. You told us that cable cars connect, they fill gaps, they extend, and they relieve. You also focus on the implementation in, in, in cities with the, uh, the case study of, of Medellin, of an integrated transport system. Thank you very much. We have now reached the end of this session. I would like to, sp to, to thank uh, warmly the five speakers for your excellent uh, contributions. And I give the world back to our master of ceremony. Thank you, sir. And uh, we have practically come to the end of the business session uh, of the day. And uh, we express thanks to the chair as well as to all the speakers who have enlightened us with a very, very valuable information on very new technologies. And uh, as a matter of uh, gratitude, we would be presenting the mementos to all the chairperson as well as the speakers. I invite uh, Mr. Om Hari Pandey, Executive Director, Rolling Stock. Delhi Metro Rail Corporations to kindly give away the presentation of mementos to the speaker as well as the chairperson. So we are now going into the last uh, closing and validity session. Uh, before that, uh, we would, uh, it would be our responsibility to express uh, thanks to the sponsors who have supported us in making uh, this event successful. I would like to express thanks to Alstom, KFW, Apex Bank, KFW, and also the media partners uh, Rail News, Rail Analysis, Infrastructure Today, Rail Business, Metro Rail News, Rail Persona. Uh, now we will uh, go for the concluding, closing and relative sessions. I invite uh, for this uh, closing session uh, Shri Sharat Sharmaji, Director, Operations, Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, and Shri K.K. Sabarwalji, Director of Finance, <coughs> Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, and Shri Jerome Porovics, Director of Regional Officers and Services UITP, and Shri Rohan Dubey, Director of Rail Sector 
ATP brusilis. Uh, surrounding area, how they will do some cycling path, uh, um, uh, pedestrian access to the station, and how they will redesign the city uh, around the, the, the transport uh, infrastructure itself, let's say. About the, the financing uh, um, operation of this tram cable car uh, operation, it has been financed by uh, AFD, so the, the French counterpart of uh, KFW. Um, with a loan, uh, a 250 million US loan to the city of Medellin, uh, which is buying and owning the assets and giving the uh, implementation, operation and maintenance of the whole network to a public uh, entity, Metro de Medellin, uh, which is the public operator of the, of the city. Um, you can see here the network as it was 10 years ago on the right. So blue and red metro and the first green cable car feeder, uh, talking about 100, um, 123 million passenger a year. And the network today, um, they invested in a tram, few cable cars, BRTs, no big infrastructure, uh, no big investment, and they more than doubled the ridership uh, uh, on a yearly basis different reason for this success. Um, as we mentioned, they used various modes of transport. There's no one good solution. The idea is to use several adapted to the need in order to interconnect them. Another key uh, uh, success factor is, of course, the fact that more than a single operator, it's an integrated network interconnected with at least, if it's not a single operator, uh, public authorities that make sure that the various operators are operating in an integrated network with the schedules, uh, uh, with, of course, a tarification system, allowing the people to, uh, uh, with a single ticket, do their whole trip using one, two, three different transportation mode. And at last, of course, the physical in integration. We've seen this picture already. Um, if for multimodality, um, people need to onboard walk 500 meters in order to get uh, their next transportation system, it won't be competitive compared to their car on an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, transport. So we're talking about walking less than 80 meters, one minute connection between one transportation to another. So it's key for architect, urban planner to design a proper integrated multimodal station. Some uh, uh, few figures, um, the technical success, first of all, um, cable cars seen as an attraction, tourism. Uh, uh, here we're talking about 20 hours of operation per day. Uh, um, huge problematics of preventive maintenance, uh, operation, and of course availability rates, what matters in public transport. People are relying in the morning uh, on the system to go to work, so we can't afford to have any failure, any problem. Um, the social inclusion. Um, more than 10 years after the, the K-Line, the first cable car uh, uh, operation, they've seen the, the homicide rate drop by 84% uh, um, uh, nearby the, the, the first metro cable uh, line. The economical impact, of course, as any public transportation infrastructure, if people are saving time, it's a lot of money at stake, especially if we are talking about millions, uh, uh, hundreds of millions of uh, uh, trips per, per year. The environmental impact, um, the city is getting uh, uh, from the UN CDM program, uh, uh, proving that the, the, their new systems is allowing some uh, CO2 emission saving. They are financing parts of the operating cost uh, through this, uh, this program, almost 2 million US uh, over five years, six years. Um, you can see a picture on the, on the right, uh, PM Lee, so the Singaporean Prime Minister, awarding the um, 2016 um, World City Prize to the uh, Medellin mayor and, um, and uh, Medellin governor uh, in 2016 last, uh, last year. Thank you very much.